true or false and why you don't brush your hair? <laughs> that is false. <laughs> I do brush my hair. What do you mean? I don't believe I can do anything this life by myself. Lob it in once again, Durant. Single coverage. Shoots over hard and knocks it down. Do you write music? Uh, I write rhymes sometimes. Been in the studio with just about like, not everybody, but with a lot of people. Okay, where's the song? Yo, this KD. I'm about to take it there with Taylor Rooks. I know she got a lot, a lot of deep questions she want to ask me. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for letting me spend your New York off day with you. No doubt. Is living in the city everything you thought it was going to be? Yeah, it is. <laughs> you always hear the bad things about the city and not so much the great things that can happen. And every day I feel like I take a piece of New York City on the way to work with me, so it's pretty yeah. cool. Well, I know you love Yulon. This is one of your favorites. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know you love all the food here. Thank you God. love Dara. Oh now, God. I know I it, bro. you're here so much that Dara actually knows your order memorized. Yes. What does he get? Kev loves the, the chicken saute and the shrimp saute. Those are his go-to. With the fried rice. That's Man, fried rice. Yeah, we go back almost, what, 10 years now. Coming back and forth to New York City, you know? So mm -hmm. I got friends here already. And I live right around the corner. So it was easy, man. I met you when you were an all-star in Orlando, playing for the Thunder. We've been friends since then. What's the biggest difference between the Kevin I met then and the Kevin you are now? It's just a natural evolution of being more comfortable with myself. And I just removed a lot of distractions that I was putting on myself, I guess. What was the hardest distraction to remove? Worrying about how I'd be viewed after a game or how I feel after a loss instead of just focusing on getting better as a player every day. I stopped investing too much in like just the outcome of the games and more so just kept it at the, the work that I put in. I don't understand this. Why on earth did every person think you were going to the Knicks? I mean, it's the NBA. Anything can start, any yes. you know, rumors happen, and stuff starts, and it's just the nature of the beast. There was KD Knicks billboards. It was like already graphics of KD and Kyrie and Zion, <laughs> like in Knicks uniforms. Every fan on social media enjoys seeing what their team is doing as far as free agency. I was at the Nets game against the Suns. You were pump faking, yeah, yeah, yeah. fake dribbling, <laughs> fake shooting. And I was like, I know Kevin, he is itching to come back right now. Yeah. The culture of the game is uh, definitely missing from my life right now. Yeah. The team aspect of, you know, watching film every day and just having a goal to meet as a basketball player, I definitely miss that. So any chance I get to be on the floor and kind of mm -hmm. do my shadow moves, I try to. Just trying to envision what it'll be like when I get back. Are you itching? Like, are you ready? Most definitely. My body's going to get there eventually, but mentally, you know, I would love to play again for sure. So is there any chance we see you come back this <laughs> No, I don't think so. Not for you right don't now. think so or no? No. Because no. those are two different answers. No, no. The best thing for me is to continue to rehab, get as strong as I can, and focus on next season. Okay, I want you to really paint this <clears throat> picture for me. You've been asked a couple times, but you haven't really elaborated. Yeah. When you're back, what is this Nets team going to look like? I have no clue. I mean, you, I know you think about it. You're I a do. hoop head. All you think about all the time is basketball. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, when you're thinking about the net squad, like what's in your head? It's just different lineups that we can play and use and with guys that work well with each other's skills. Putting on a jersey and actually represent Brooklyn on the road, that's going to be an exciting time as well. I think this has become such a big part of your story. It's discussed so much. Your time with the Warriors, maybe the way Golden State views you. It came up again recently with John Morant and Steph Curry. John Morant said something about Iggy. Steph posted a photo of Iggy with his trophy. John Morant posted a photo of you with your trophy. What do you feel like John Morant was implying by posting that photo? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I've always been speculation about what my place was on the team, and what I meant to the team. And I don't think they got anybody on the Warriors like upset that he posted a picture of me. <laughs> We're all brothers and we won championships together. It wasn't anything more than, I guess, just a, a little jab, I guess. I think that the narrative, though, that was on social media, separate from the Warriors, was like, they got those two 
because KD was there. It's narratives. They got narratives for everything. There's a lot of stuff a casual fan don't get about the game, so they're making a lot of speculation on what they see, and it's not the whole picture. So. One thing you do say when this happens, you're like, we're talking about basketball, not life. Like, yeah, nobody like, is yeah. not friends after. Yeah, it's not, yeah. yeah. I mean, because you hear all the trash talking games, but it's like, we're all a family at the end of the day, but we still compete hard against each other, but we still want to protect each other when we're off the floor, and we all respect what we do. I think the talk when you were deciding what team you're going to go to after Golden State was like, do you feel like you have to win a ring somewhere else to solidify this idea that you can just win a championship? I don't believe I can do anything in this life by myself. I never felt that we can win championships based off of only what I do. I felt that way in OKC when we had success and Golden State when we had success and it's gonna have to be the same thing in Brooklyn. A lot of people seen that I left a successful organization and wonder why. For the most part, it's just wanting to just make a change in my career. It was as mm -hmm. simple as that. It's so crazy to think what OKC could have been, though. Everybody it, says it that. It really man. is. Sometimes the business get in the way, and sometimes, yeah. you know, things just don't happen. But that run we did have was special. It absolutely Going to the finals, I ain't gonna ever forget that. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to hear you talk about other teams you've been on because you clearly have these incredibly fond memories about the teams. Yeah. But the way it's painted is that it, that isn't it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just so open and honest about the experience. I want the message to always be without those experiences, I wouldn't be close to who I am today. And they all made me and still embedded in my DNA, OKC and Golden State. And hopefully, I can take this into my next experience and be even better. I think like a lot of players and really a lot of people say, you know, I don't care what people think, mm -hmm. but I don't think most people mean it. No. <laughs> Do you mean it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm passionate about my art. I've heard Erica Badu say that. Mm -hmm. And I was <laughs> like, damn, I feel that. Okay, so I play this segment with a lot of people come on the show. It is called True or False and Why. Mm -hmm. The best NBA players come from the DMV. Oh my God. <laughs> True. Okay, why? I look at regions that are, uh, when it comes to basketball players as guys that fill a specific role and I feel like the DMV is made for guys that get buckets. What so, other cities like do you put in there? I know it's a compilation um, of cities. But... You can put Chicago in there. You know, a lot of guys from Chicago, they're staple of defense, but it got some good one-on-one -on -one players and good bucket getters out there in Chicago. I think LA is more so guys that can do everything from yeah. pass to score to athleticism, just Seeing so many influence out on that side of the country as well can definitely help a young kid form who he wants to be on the floor. So it, I look at all that stuff when it comes to looking at players and what got me to this point as well. True or false and why you want to be a music producer when you retire? <laughs> uh, false. <laughs> okay. I did, I did a few years back and not realizing how tough it is to actually become great at that. Right now, I just got so much respect for a lot of guys in that position to say, I'm just gonna do this when I'm done, you know, so. Like it's harder than that. Yeah, yeah. it's way harder than that. Okay, true or false and why people take you too seriously? Um, true. The main topic around me the last few years is moving teams and that hit a lot of people hard. So now whenever I say something is getting blown out of proportion and Sometimes I'm just like, you can just ignore me. That's my whole thing is, you know, you can just ignore me, but I, I understand where it comes from. True or false and why you don't brush your hair? <laughs> that is false. <laughs> I do brush my hair. What do you mean? But people always talk about yeah, that. Yeah, on the basketball court, I don't care. I come to the games, actually, just roll out of bed, you know, <laughs> and just go play. I mean, I'm on TV a lot when I do these things, so I see why people make that. <laughs> but my whole thought process is like, man, I really just go out of bed to go hoop and come right back home. Some of the memes are funny. It's a, of course it yeah. is. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I gotta laugh at it if I'm gonna laugh at all that other stuff they put on there. Yeah. Obviously, before you got hurt, there's this, what, like three to four year stretch where you could absolutely argue you were the best player on the planet. If you wanna argue that. Do you think it could be argued? Yeah, it could be argued for a lot of guys. But yeah, I feel like I was in that argument. If you want to break into that conversation, you got to do some great shit in the league. You know, you got to really go out there and leave your mark and leave your stamp in, on the game. And I want to be in those conversations. I want to play for a long time and have longevity in the game of playing the league. You know, that's because of what the guys before me had laid out, from the Jordans to the Kobe's to the KG's to the Tim Duncan's to the LeBron's. Even now, I'm still getting pushed by players in the league now, from the James Harden's to the Steph's to the Giannis. Guys are gonna be legends and Hall of Famers when they are done. It's pretty cool to know that I played with some of the greatest players of all time and they can and they respect my game. 
the unquestionable greatness, the greatest, Kobe Bryant. How did losing Kobe Bryant affect you? Just can't stop thinking about it, man. And Kobe is somebody that I competed against and was a teammate of as well. I can go on and on about how he made me feel as a person and as a player, and I just, I love him. And I'm always gonna be in my heart. I'm always gonna think about him when I go out there and play and perfect my craft and just try to do right by him by being the best person and player I can be every day. You know, being on a team with somebody and being their teammate, you really see it for who they, who they really are to the core. It's hard for me to even think about you know, cause man, I wish he was. I wish he was still around. You said there were little moments with Kobe that impacted you. What are some of those? Just the first few practices in Team USA in 2012. Um, just his approach to practice, and then also how he played in the games and his focus and what he wanted to do out there on the court. He was a defender for us and a shot maker. So like to see Kobe play a role outside of just being the main scorer, it showed me that anybody can, you know, lock into a role and, and perfect it. So it made me respect him even more for just being a well-rounded, well-versed player. As a hooper, I wanted his aesthetic as a player. Um, it was uh, pretty sweet to see his methods, and I didn't really get to appreciate it until I got older as a player and started to see, oh, that's what he meant when he was doing it this way. Oh, that's how he felt when he played in this game. So, you know, I'm always going to live with Kobe in my heart. Brian attacking. All the way Question for you. What player from the 90s would you most like to see in the modern NBA? Shaq for sure. He would be the most interesting to see right now. Okay, why? Because he's so big and agile and athletic that he can run and play in the pace and space that we do now, but you could play small guys against him, so it'd be uh, he'd be the ultimate like cheat code for the game. Okay, so what's your drink of choice? Uh, I got a little. 1942 in here. No, not on the rocks, just 42 straight, straight. within line. Yep. Okay. All right, let's talk some music. I know that's another one of your passion points. What five songs are in your rotation right now? Can I check my phone? Of course. What I'm listening to the most right now? Mm hmm. War by Drake. <laughs> you love that song. Every day is uh, listening to that at least three times yeah. a day. Uh, guess what? Russ, Rick Ross. That's a dope song. You gotta check Russ album out. Fabio Foreign, Brooklyn. So I gotta represent that. And okay. Two Chains, Virgil Discount. And I go Jack Boys, Gang Gang, Sheck West. Yeah. Don Tolliver. Mm -hmm. uh, Travis. I'm really starting to follow producers now. Ooh, who are some of your favorites? Boy Wonder, 40. Those two guys are part of got me into like wanting to follow producers. Uh, especially, you know, my one of my favorite artists and Drake, they produce a lot of his stuff. Um, been into some new cast that I heard, Axel Beats, uh, Rico Beats. There's, guys, there's a lot of guys that yeah, I follow on Instagram that they post little snippets of their music that I enjoy. Do you write music? Uh, I write rhymes sometimes. Okay. I, write, I got a little rap, scrapbook full of raps, I guess, yeah. Do you ever record it? Yeah, I do. Really? I, yeah, I mean, it's fun to get it off and, and get in the studio, I, yeah. That's a huge hobby. It's underrated how many guys have their own uh, in-home studios as basketball players. I go to some big studios sometimes, but most of the time I'm just in the house creating stuff and mm -hmm. having people come over. Me and JaVale McGee, were, he's huge. Like He has uh, produced his own tapes. He has huge artists on his mixtapes as well. I feel like every team I've been on had at least one or two guys that didn't mind getting into the studio. So yeah, it's pretty fun. I had DeMar DeRozan on the show last season, and he said he has a whole mixtape no yes. one's heard except for like Kyle Lowry, Drake, and Kendrick Lamar. Um, we was in, I want to say, 2014 or f one of those. Me and DeMar got in the studio in Vegas. No. Me, DeMar, and Rudy. Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay raps? Yeah, you know, we all just play around in there. Okay, where's the song? Like, where, where is it at? It's a, nobody's going to put no records out. We're just doing it for fun. I'm gonna find those songs, no, trust. No, you're not gonna find them. I'm gonna them. find them. I don't know where or no. how, but you know, I want mine to this. <laughs> okay, so you have a song with Damar and Rudy. I think you and LeBron have a song. Yeah. Who else? Well, uh, you and me and Steven Jackson had one. A couple cats that, you know, that I knew playing ball. Mike Cabongo, who played, who was an undrafted player coming into the league a few years back. I mean, I got songs and been in the studio with just about, not everybody, but with a lot of people. 
Okay, if you had a rap name, what would it be? <laughs> Probably Easy Money. Okay, Easy Money. You can or rhyme with that. <laughs> Easy Money or Slim Reaper or one of those. Probably to pick between those two or both. Okay, another top five question. Yeah. <clears throat> you could only watch basketball highlights of five players forever. I like that. Who are the players? Kobe, Mike. I watch film. Uh, Shaq, Magic, Braun. Okay. If I couldn't watch nobody else and they say I just had to watch those five, I think I could be good the rest of my life. My favorite game that I play on the show. It is called On This Day You Posted. Okay? I got a lot of posts. Yes, you do. <laughs> May 2010, Twitter is better than going to the club. I was having a whack night in the club that night. Nobody was dancing, everybody was just staring at each other. And I was like, this is what I come here for. And I guess I had an epiphany. When I have an epiphany in my mind, sometimes I say it, and that was one of those times. Is Twitter still better than going to the club? Some nights. <laughs> August 2009, I remember when I got attacked by a dog walking to the bus stop. I got on the bus and I didn't have no lunch money. <laughs> I got robbed by a dog. <laughs> Yo, I remember Please that. Please tell this story. I was in kindergarten walking to the bus by myself and dog came out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm reaching in my pocket when I got on the bus. Damn, I can't eat today. I must have, it must have fell out of my pocket and I was like, this I got robbed by a dog. The dog, dog thief. Dog got me. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, my personal favorite, July 2011. Bubble guts woke me up Yo. out of my sleep. <laughs> I, remember that. I had to check my sheets for any slippage. Oh, that's embarrassing. But I was really a comedian at that point on Twitter or trying to be, and I thought it was funny. You ain't have no bubble guts. Of course, I mean, <laughs> if you ain't have bubble guts in your life, I mean, come on now. The real question is, did you nah. have any slippage? Mm -mm. <laughs> no nah. slippage. Uh-uh. <laughs> Yo, that is. <laughs> Can we cut that? No. We don't even need to be on. Like, no, we don't need to take it there. What, Taylor Rooks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, shameless plug. All right, KD, thank you so much for coming on to the show. No doubt. We got to cheers to that. Yes, my friend. <laughs>